Let's take a look at the journal entries to record notes receivable. A promissory note is a written promise to pay a certain amount of money either on demand, which is when it's requested by the other party, or at a certain point in time, such as in six months or in one year. Promissory notes are issued either when one individual or company wants to lend money to another or borrow money from another one, or also when a certain transaction, either the time period of the transaction or the amount of the transaction exceeds normal business operations, and so they'll issue a note in order to do that transaction, or when one company owes another one money and they want to continue doing business with them, so they'll issue a note to settle that open balance, that open accounts receivable. And just like we do in our accounts receivable, we need to evaluate our possible bad debts for our notes receivable, and when we record an allowance for doubtful accounts, if we thought that we were not going to be able to collect any of our notes. So let's look at some examples of recording notes. On May 1, Smith Company loaned 50,000 cash to B. Franklin on a 12-month 7% note. So here, Smith is loaning cash to B. Franklin, and so Smith Company would debit notes receivable and credit cash. And then, in 12 months, Franklin Company is going to pay them back that $50,000 plus the interest. Let's look at another example. Here, Calhoun Company wrote a $1,000 two-month 12% promissory note on June 1 to settle an open account. And so that phrase, to settle an open account, tells us that they are using that to pay off what they had owed us. And so Wilma Company, the lender in this case, is going to end up debiting notes receivable to record the note and decreasing accounts receivable to get rid of that other receivable balance. Let's look at the calculations for interest on notes. Our notes are always given to us in terms of months or days. It can be a two-month note or a 12-month note or a 10-day note, whatever the two parties decide. And the interest rates are always presented to us at an annual interest rate. This means that when we're calculating the interest on the notes, we need to take the face value times that annual interest rate times the amount of time that has gone by that we need to record the interest for. And so you need to remember that no matter how long the note is for, the interest rate is always, always, always expressed in annual terms as a one-year percentage. So here we have some examples of various types of notes and the interest calculation that you would do for those different notes. So we can see that on our 120-day notes, we're taking the face value of $730 times the 12% interest rate times 120 divided by 360. And we use 360 instead of 365 because that goes back to the time before there were calculators, and 120 out of 360 is a lot easier to calculate than 120 out of 365. So if you are given a note expressed in terms of days, you do want to use that 360 number, not 365. If we look at our next one, we have $1,000 9% six-month note, so when we're calculating that interest, we do 6 out of 12. Because it's expressed in terms of months, we'll go ahead and calculate it in terms of months. So let's look at our example here. We have Malone Supply Company, and they have the following transactions for the last two months of the year. And we need to record the interest on December 31 for all of these notes. So on November 1, they loaned 60000 cash to B. Carr on a 12-month 7% note. Then on December 1, they sold goods to R.P. Kenner and received a $3,600 90-day 8% note. And then on December 16th, they received a $12,000 180-day 9% note to settle an open account from one of the people that owed them money. So to calculate the interest for each of these, we need to look at the date the note was issued and figure out how much time has gone by between that date and December 31 because that's when we are recording the interest. And so for our loan, that's going to be two months. And so we're going to take the $60,000 times 7% times 2 out of 12. For our um, sale of the goods on December 1, that's going to be 30 days. And so we're going to calculate it based on 30 days. And for the $12,000 note, it's going to be just 15 days between December 16 and December 31. So our total interest would be $769. Now we need to look at what happens at the end of the period when that money is 
due, when that note time period is up. Either the note is going to be honored, which means the maker, which is the one who owed the money, is going to pay it in full on the maturity date just like they're supposed to. However, if they do not pay in, at maturity, the note is considered to be dishonored. And when a note is dishonored, that means it's no longer a negotiable note. It's no longer a valid note. And so we have to do something with it because that note has been dishonored. So let's look at our journal entries. Western Company lends Eastern Company $10,000 on June 1, accepting a five-month 9% note. So then Western presents the note to Eastern on November 1, saying, hey, pay me. And Eastern's going to pay. And so when we receive that money, we're going to decrease the note receivable balance. And then we need to record the interest. Our interest calculation is going to be $10,000 times 9% interest times 5 out of 12 months because the rate is always an annual rate and 5 months from June 1 to November 1. So we do count June, but not November. So June, July, August, September, October, that's 5 months. And so our interest revenue that we would credit would be 375 and therefore the total cash that they would receive would be $10,375. Now what if the note is dishonored? Eastern Company indicates they cannot pay. If Western Company does expect collection, and that's the key, they do expect to receive the money, we still have to do a journal entry because the note is no longer valid. So we still have to credit the notes receivable to remove that note, but we're going to go ahead and record the interest revenue, and we're going to move that whole amount into accounts receivable. Now, if Eastern Company says they can't pay and Western does not think they're ever going to receive that money, that's when we would write off that note. And again, if you remember from your accounts receivable, when you write off a receivable, you debit the allowance for doubtful accounts, and because we're dealing with the notes, we would credit the notes receivable. Okay, and so now we've gone through all the journal entries for the issuance of notes, calculating interest on notes, and then both the honor and the dishonor of the notes receivable.